no matter how much collecting changes, it usually stays the same. We are here today again talking about the same topics that we've covered over and over and over again. That being, you have no control over streaming. Now, if you've been tracking it, and I've heard this from John Campia's podcast, so in all fairness, I heard this through John Campia, but you cannot watch Indiana Jones, the first four movies of Indiana Jones, on Disney Plus anymore. They are Paramount produced, they are Paramount owned. So if you want to watch those movies, they are currently on Paramount Plus worldwide. No matter which country you're in, they are now exclusive to Paramount Plus. Now, obviously, number five, the latest one, Dollar Destiny, that's still on Disney because Disney produced this movie. So that's a Disney-made movie. Obviously, the first four, though, are not Disney-made movies. They belong to Paramount. And the license expired on October 1st from what John Campia said. Now, I've covered physical media versus streaming so many times. What you're buying is not necessarily ownership. You're buying a license. But these were on streaming. I'm talking about a streamer service right now. You are buying a subscription to a streaming service. And the intent of that streaming is that, hey, I want to access Indiana Jones. I want to access Star Wars. I want to access you know, content that you would associate with that brand. Lucasfilm is a brand that is owned by Disney. However, they do not own Indiana Jones. They do not own those movies. They own one of the movies. The rest belongs to Paramount. So when you buy something like Indiana Jones, you are essentially saying, I want to watch this through a service like an Amazon, through a service like an Apple TV, through a streamer like Disney Plus if you subscribe. But at the end of the day, let's say, now obviously this was removed from the streaming options. This is still available on, I believe, Apple TV for purchase and also Amazon for, for purchase, I believe, as well. Maybe Google Play Store as well. I'm sure it's available for purchase elsewhere other than Disney, uh, other than Paramount Plus. But if you were subscribed to Disney Plus and were like, oh yeah, tonight I'm going to watch my marathon of Indiana Jones, experience all the movies, you have one of the five movies available on Disney Plus. The other four, you have to have a second subscription service to watch the first four. And as John Campier was saying, because Indiana Jones is such a high yield of viewers, especially Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, you can say Temple of Doom and, um, what's the other one? Temple of Doom and I always forget this third one, uh, Last Crusade. I always forget Last Crusade. But if you want to watch all three, and mainly Raiders, because Raiders is the absolute best. <laughs> but if you want to watch the first three and number four, where Shia finally got his come up sentence and said, I'm going to replace Indiana Jones, and it went nowhere, but... <laughs> Hey, he swung through the forest. That was a great scene. But, you know, if you want to watch those first four movies, Paramount's the place to do it now. You need two subscriptions. And people might say, oh, but it's still cheaper than owning it. Well, I mean, is it? I mean, if you want to watch this one, Disney Plus, if you want to do in the best quality, I'm talking about 4K. This one was a bit expensive because I imported it. I'm sure you can get it a lot cheaper in America. But the first four, you can get those for about 100 and that's when I were brand new, so I'm guessing this has probably went down now. You can probably get them for a lot cheaper on the second-hand market too. But, you know, you're paying maybe $50 now, or not at that, but let's say the 4K option of Disney+, Plus, the 4K option of Paramount, you may be paying, I don't know, 100 I mean, Paramount used to have a deal on where you pay, I believe, $50 or $44 for a year. But, you know, that's the whole dilemma you are paying more now to access Indiana Jones. Whereas this, the cost hasn't changed. I still paid what I did for it. I still own it. The cost hasn't went up because it's went to a different service. The license has expired. I still can access that content. All I gotta do is take it out. Boom, let's get it out of the case if it's gonna come out. It is one of those tight cases. So let's take it out. The disc is right there, boom. Get a nice poster with it too. With the beautiful Shia LaBeouf right there. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf was so underrated in that movie. He really should have been Indiana Jones Part 2. He really should have been the next Indiana Jones. he done such great Marvel. he done marvellous work with Transformers. Sorry, Shia. I do love you, man. You're 
a decent actor. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying, like, if I want to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, bang, there it is. Price hasn't changed from when I first picked this up. I don't have to subscribe monthly to watch it. I can still access it right there. And yet, here we are talking about physical media still being a better way to access this. Now, if you bought it for Apple TV, I don't think they're taking your purchases off you. But what happens if Apple's license to sell that content or even allow people to view their purchases expires for Indiana Jones? And they say, hey, we actually lost that content. You can't watch Indiana Jones even though you purchased it because at the end of the day, we have a licensing deal to sell that content. What happens then? All I'm saying is that if you even bought that content and they said, hey, uh, Paramount are going to sell Indiana Jones to Netflix, but the caveat is that they have to pull it off all sales from all the major websites. They have to pull the licensing deals and once they've expired, they have to remove it from everything. And you can only watch Indiana Jones in one place and that is Netflix. It could happen and Netflix would throw a stupid amount of money at it, obviously. But it could happen. This, this theory of, hey, you are at the mercy of streamers and at the mercy of these digital storefronts, it should not be taken lightly. I mean, if you like Indiana Jones, you should be able to watch Indiana Jones. And yes, while 4K is a more expensive entry, there's nothing stopping you from getting the movies for like $2 a disc on, or well, $2 per movie on DVD. Or even Blu-ray. Most people are happy with the Blu-ray. And you can probably get the Blu-ray versions for relatively cheap. I mean, you could probably get all four or five movies, or four at least, the first four. You could probably get a box set of those for maybe $20 pre-owned on Blu-ray. But you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm talking about. If you wanted to just watch the Blu-ray version of them, the 1080p versions, it's a lot cheaper right now to watch those on physical media than it is to go out and subscribe to Disney Plus and subscribe to Paramount and watch them all that way. It is showing why we need physical media. And yes, while I don't believe everyone's gonna run out and buy every movie possible like I did, or not every movie possible, I don't have every movie possible, but you know, all the big ones I wanted. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it's still one of those situations where you need to say, how much do you love Indiana Jones? How much do you love Raiders? How much do you love Temple of Doom? How much do you love Last Crusade? How much do you love that one with Shia LaBeouf that everyone loves? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, how much do you love these movies and how much does it mean to you to have access to those movies all in a convenient one place? This is convenient to me. I have them all in one place. Boom, there they are, all five movies. And yes, while it is a higher cost of entry, one-off price, it is something that, it is It is a one-off price. It's not a recurring subscription. It's not a recurring expense. It's a something that I know I'm going to say, hey, I haven't watched Dial of, uh, Dial of Destiny yet, but if I wanted to go and watch the first four, which I have done many times, boom, there they are, right there. I mean, I haven't watched part four all that much. I've watched it probably three, four times in the lifespan. But Raiders is one of those movies that I watch at least once or twice a year. Raiders is, Raiders is gold. But you know, this is what I'm talking about. I know I'm going to get my money's worth watching that movie over and over and over and over and over again. And let's put that back up on the, up on the shelf right there. But what happens when licensing deals expire? What happens if tomorrow, what's a licensing deal? Like, let's say Universal own the Marvel uh, Hulk, the Hulk movie, uh, 2008. Let's say Universal say, hey, uh, Disney, you know how we did that licensing deal to let you have the Hulk on your streaming service? Well, it turns out we're starting a streaming service and we're going to have it on Universal Plus or whatever. Well, there you go. And I know um, Comcast, I think, own Universal, so maybe it's on Peacock in America. But this is what I'm talking about. These licensing deals can expire and your purchases and your viewing habits can be changed pretty quickly if you're not prepared for it. And yeah, this is just a bit of a rant. I think John Campier did a really good take on it. And yes, John Campier also talked about Rob, uh, oh, I forget his name, Robert, he, he, the friend on there, I forget his last name, but he's always on the John Campier podcast and 
he was talking about how he went to his house and talked about the physical media and was like, how much have you actually watched of this collection? And he was like, uh, probably not a lot of it. And I'm like that too. Like, I'm kind of like, okay, out of all of this collection, I've probably watched about 20%. But the idea is, like, as I said, librarian status and also for me, it's a throwback to the past. And it's it just makes me feel warm inside to have this behind me and to have that sort of old school vibe of going to the video shop and saying, okay, I might not watch, I don't know, what's something here I haven't watched? I may not watch, I feel like I've seen a lot of these movies. Yeah, and this is the thing, I've seen a lot of these movies, so it's not like I haven't watched them and I'm just buying blind, but I there are movies I pick up blind where I'm like, okay, I haven't watched Coffee. I haven't watched that movie. Pam Greer, amazing actress, by the way, Pam Greer is freaking awesome, but... I haven't watched this movie. This is one of the movies I have not seen. And that whole idea that I can like, I'm not at the mercy of a streaming service for this and nobody can take it off my shelf. But also with this purchase, I am kind of saying that I want the option to have this in my collection and not have to search for it, not have to go running down things. I know I'm trying to form my thoughts here because I'm trying to think how to put it. I bought this on the, because of its significance, like Pam Greer, and I believe this is the one that maybe put her on the map or like was one of her first early films. But if I wanted to watch this movie and I was like, you know what, I'm going to watch Coffee tonight. I'm going to put, I'm going to put time and effort into watching this movie. The last thing I want to do is go and track down through 50 different streaming services. Okay, who has it? Where do I find it? And I know Apple TV and all that make it easy as like typing in the title. But I've got it here right in my collection. And I want that because I love the art as well. Obviously, the art is something else as well. But I can actually get it off a shelf and say, yep, that's one I want to watch. Or I can browse through, a, have a browse through my collection and say, okay, I'm going to go through and, oh, I haven't seen coffee. Yeah, let's have a look at that one. Yeah, I'm going to watch this tonight. It's the throwback to the video shop days. And while this might be a bit of a rant, I love the idea that it's a throwback, but it's also something that resonates with me. It's something that I know. It's something that I can see. It's something I can hold. It's a physical item. And yes, this might go out of print. Who knows? Maybe I bought this. I mean, this is a limited run item. This is number 342 of 2,500, and I'm sure that's only in Australia. But, you know, I can... It's a physical item I can hold. It is an asset at the end of the day. And while people don't see these as assets, these are assets. I can sell this. I can, I mean, I probably won't get as much out of it as I first bought it for. But if I got desperate, I know I could probably sell that for, I don't know. That's a Blu-ray. I'm guessing I could probably sell it for 30 bucks or something. I, I mean, if it was sealed, if I opened it, it would probably be half the price or even a quarter of the price. But I know I can sell that. And that's my mentality behind not opening them because if it, comes down to it and I need to sell something like um, I've said it once or twice on this channel I've seen bad boys before like where is it bad boys is over here I've seen bad boys before but I know this blu-ray is out of print or was out of print I don't know if they've reproduced like started producing it again so what happens if I need some money and I got really desperate I mean this will be the last case scenario if I had to sell it but the option is there I can sell it it's something that I can sell on at a decent price because it is out of print or was out of print for a while. And I know that people are going to want to buy it because it is a collector's item. And I leave the plastic on it because it does preserve it. Now, obviously, if I was going to watch Bad Boys, if I said, yeah, you know what, I just want to watch Bad Boys tonight, then this is getting opened. I don't care about the whole thing of like, yeah, cool, have it just for the sake of grade it and then sell it for $1,000. I'm not a fan of that. If I want to watch it, I'm opening that. But if I'm not going to watch it, then why, why would I open it if I'm not going to watch it? I'll wait until I'm ready to watch it, and then I'll open it then. Anyways, this is a bit of a rant, so I'm going to end it right here. But tell me what you think. Indiana Jones. Were you planning on watching these first four movies? Because how do you feel about having to pay more now for Indiana Jones? You have to have two streaming services to watch these movies now. Let me know what you think, guys, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. This is on Paramount now.